Welcome to a new edition of Showtime with Coop. Insightful BS with my Laker teammates and NBA legends. And as you can tell, we don't have a guest today because no legend. we <laughs> are going to pay, you know, uh, we're going to pay homage to the Hall of Fame. And the reason I say <laughs> that because unfortunately or fortunately, fucking got in. <laughs> Coop. Hey, first, Nick, I'm laying in the bed. And I knew the call was coming that day. And at 9.08, never forget this, 9.08, I get a call and it's Jerry Colangelo. And he's saying they're talking. And, you know, I had heard that talk two other times before. And they go, you know, Coop, um, you're a Hall of Famer, but you didn't get in this time. And finally, I just kind of like went numb. You know, because they were talking, but I couldn't really hear what they were talking. My wife was sitting next to me and they said, Coop, you got in. So I'm sitting there and I'm just kind of like looking. And I'm saying, OK, I'm waiting for them to say you didn't get in. And uh, my wife said, babe, you got in. <laughs> I said, what? He said, they said you got in. And Nick, I let out this yell, man. Did uh, you? That was like, pretty loud, uh... but. Um, no, it was a scream, you know, and that's and then when I got my senses back, I go, Is this April Fool's joke? And they were kind of like, No, no, Coop, you really you, re you got in, congratulations. And I said to myself, You know, this is a very, I just, I, I don't know what I was listening to or thinking about, but I was like, You know, this is very, very cruel because everybody wants to get into the Hall of Fame, of and course, I'm coming with that joke on April Fool, but you know what. It turned out to be true. I was last Monday. Here we are this Monday, uh, April the 9th, I believe we're in today. And this was April the 1st. And Nick, it was like a whirlwind. I mean, once they said that, then I get all these phone calls about what you got to do. Final Four is in Phoenix. I catch a plane on, on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm in Phoenix. And then everything just starts happening. So it's been a real, real wonderful, chaotic enjoyable, hectic, 72 hours. But you know what, Nick, I am so, so happy. You know, I never, as a young man growing up here, and you know my story from beginning to end, never thought that my footsteps would be at the door and I would actually be knocking. And it's it's official, but it's not official. Be knocking and that door open and they said, hey, Coop, come on in. And with the greatest players that's ever played this basketball game, guys I grew up, uh, Walt Bellamy, uh, Connie Hawkins, John Havlicek, players of that magnitude for me, just to name those few. And here I am going to be um, immortalized with, with the best. I am uh, really, really uh, grateful. I feel very, very blessed. And the, the and I'm going to let you talk, Nick, but I'm just trying to get my feelings out right now. Um, you know, when you get there, they start talking about, Coop, you got to get your speech and um, you know, so now I've been going through my speech, Nick, and you know what? I started going through it when I was in Phoenix and started crying. You know, tears is coming out of my eyes because, you know, I have so many people to thank, so many people that supported me, uh, very few that hated on me. I got to mm -hmm. admit that. I didn't have a lot of people hating on me, but, and, it, and if they hated on me, it was only because of my size. I was skinny. You know, when you're a young kid, hey, I'm going to the NBA. Could be too thin to go to the NBA. What are you talking about? But a lot of people support me and a lot of people loving on me. And it is just, uh, it's going to be heartfelt when I get the opportunity to say what I'm going to say. You know, you want to thank everybody in the world. And they say, Coop, you got to keep it limited. So I have said my speech is going to be two and a half to three minutes long. That same day, I'm sitting in the room getting ready to go to the ring sizing and the jacket fitting. And uh, well, first of all, on the flight there, I land and I'm in the car. James Worthy calls me. Right. Ooh, congratulations. Boy, I told you, going. you know, he's giving me all these things. I'm like, James, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. And uh, so when I get there, I'm in the hotel room. Magic calls me. Coop, congratulations, this and that. And now I go to the thing and I get the ringside. They go, well, Coop, who are your presenters? Yeah, I was going to ask you. Who, who, who? Yeah, go ahead. And I hadn't thought of that. And... You know, the people that, like I said, I've had a lot of wonderful people, but it has to be a Hall of Famer. So, mm -hmm. you know, I got an opportunity to choose between four of the greatest, Jerry yep. West, Magic, 
Kareem or uh, James Worthy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Jerry's going to be there. Jerry's going in as a contributor. Uh, the things he's done, he's in there three times. Uh, so looking at that, I, I'm on a, you know what? I'm going to keep it a secret here and we'll do that the next time. I'm not going to tell you who. Hey there, sports fans. This is Nick Gelso coming to you from our East Boston studios. Now, if you're anything like me, you're missing the gridiron right now as football has winded down. But fear not, because I've got something to keep you and that competitive spirit alive. Let me introduce to you Prize Picks, the ultimate destination for daily fantasy sports. It's not just a game, it's your chance to go head to head battling thousands of players. Just you, your picks, and the thrill of watching your winnings pile up. And folks, the action doesn't stop with football. As tournament season heats up and the race for playoff home court advantage intensifies, basketball takes center stage. And with prize picks, you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. That's right, America's number one fantasy sports app is here to make every moment count. With prize picks, you can win up to 100 times your money with just four correct picks. Whether it's NBA, NHL, or even college basketball, the opportunities are endless. And hey, did I mention you can play it in over 30 states across the country? Now let me share a little secret with you. Price Picks offers injury insurance, ensuring your entries stay live even if one of your players gets sidelined. Talk about peace of mind. Price Picks gives it to you. And folks, speaking from personal experience, Price Picks is a game changer. Download the app today. Use my code, our code, CLNS, for the first deposit match up to $100. That's right. They're going to give you up to $100 back if you use the code CLNS. Remember, on Price Picks, you pick more, you pick less. It's that easy. Until next time, keep those picks coming and let the winning roll in. I, I was good. That was on my list of questions. First of all, Coop, I couldn't be more happy for you. And I think all the people who are your friends, seen it online, like outside of even the basketball world, especially outside of the basketball world. I think you got in for all of us because we've been rooting for that for so long. I don't know if you remember, I was on the last one where you didn't get in and had to give a much different type talk than today. I said on Twitter that your Larry Bird fans feared you most. And we did. We fucking did. You were... Six foot six and skinny, but man, you could stop Larry Legend. I mean, first time I talked to you, like, I'm the fucking bird catcher. Remember <laughs> the bird stopper? <laughs> and, uh, but looking at everything you've done, I mean, just from the standpoint of the, the five championships with the, th with you're the, the big three, you and Magic and Kareem, I mean, it's so overdue. And I hope Staples is next or Bitcoin, whatever it's called now, crypto. But first things first, enjoy this while you can, man. I, I'll i be at the, the I don't care what I got to pay. I'll be at that induction to cheer you on. And uh, if they do raise your number eventually next season, I'll be there too, Coop. You, you've become a dear friend of mine. I can't tell you how happy I am for you. Thank you. And Thank how you. overdue this is. I can only think of DJ because he waited so long. Yeah. You know, and I think your careers are kind of, Similar to, you know, defensive, clutch shooters. And uh, now you're in there with everybody. I mean, is this like the the ribbon on your career? Like, has this been 20 years of holding your breath for 30 years for this day to come? You know what, Nick? No, it, is, it hasn't been because I never thought of this. When I retired, it was like, okay, I'm moving on to the next phase. But uh, to go along with those lines you just mentioned, what people don't understand is that this is not the NBA Hall of Fame. This is basketball Hall of Fame. You know, I'm going in with some coaches, high school, college, uh, both sides, men and women. So I think what they do is they look at the body of work. And if you look at the Hall of Fame and you want to look at it from the NBA side, I think you look at guys who averaging 28 a game, 30 a game, uh, 15 All-Stars, 10 All-Stars, uh, five first team All-NBAs. And the thing I like about it is that if you, that was the criteria for the NBA, then I don't I don't meet those standards. But this is basketball, and this is what you do. And the good thing about it, and Jerry Colangelo is a great man. Uh, Vinny Del Negro is on the board, another mm -hmm. one. They look at the whole body of their work. And, uh, you know, a, year, a couple of years ago, you know, Dennis Rodman got in. Mm-hmm. 
Then Wallace got in, mm -hmm. and that there kind of like said, okay, well, if those guys got in, because they weren't known as scorers, those guys right. were looking at the kind of like the glue players is mm -hmm. what people say that I was. And, you know, I just tried to go out there and do whatever I could to make the help the team win. That right there gave me a little sense of security. That's when I kind of started thinking, okay, well, maybe there's a chance. But the Hall of Fame was never on my mind. Uh, again, it's an individual accolade, which I like. And I'm not big on individual accolades, but the Hall of Fame is your body of work. So my 12-year career playing with the Lakers, five championships, uh, five first-team ball defense. Then once I retire, I moved into the WNBA, went over there and won some championships. Out of my 14 years there, went to the finals four times. We won it twice. Uh, the development of players. Uh, G League, then G -League high too. You have G League championship, don't you? And then that's what I was going to say. After yeah. that, the D-League championship uh, or the, yeah, it was the D-League at that time. D-League. The D-League now going there. And again, for me, it's all about the development, giving the knowledge to, to players, men and women and kids uh, to this game. So when you look at that and you look at the Basketball Hall of Fame, I like to think my resume can be measured up with everybody else's. Yeah, and it, and it, it, it goes to be said for basketball, your contributions – have been so great because the WNBA, we did not know if that was going to become what it is becoming. And you were on the forefront of that with titles. The D League, like it wasn't the G League, it was the D League. You won titles there. And I think, Coop, you're such a um, charismatic guy, but you're, you're, you're pretty understated when you're in a room full of – I've seen you, like, even with the, the big three guys. Like, you, you, you're not obnoxious, in other words. So – I think people just cheer for you because you're like one of us, you know, you're a glue guy. I, I've never been so happy for a Laker in my life. You're, <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. Like I, I and I'm getting accused. You had of to throw that jab in there for well, a Laker. Okay. All right. Coop, Coop, I gotta tell you, I, I am getting jabbed left and right on Twitter being called a Lakers guy, not a Celtics guy. Cause, cause of you. And I, I'm so proud if that's what it means to be your friend, I got to be a Lakers guy. Fuck it. I'll be a Lakers guy. <laughs> hey, listen, Nick, my wife, who, who just barely starting to know a little bit about the basketball in NBA, she goes like this the other day. She goes, so, uh, babe, who are you thinking about that's going to be one of your presenters? She goes, you know what? Why don't you get Larry Bird? <laughs> uh, you know, I I have to tell you, I th the thought crossed my mind. It just wouldn't be appropriate with all the people that you've been impacted. Like, you didn't mention <laughs> Pat Riley. Pat Riley's in there. He's in the hall. But, yeah, but uh, I... Uh, Larry would I, be... I, you almost made me say who I was going <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> going back to the Larry Bird statement, I was yeah. like, you know what, babe? That would be so ironic. Uh, again, him saying I'm the best he's ever played. I'm saying he's the best I played against. But if Larry were to get up there with me, I don't know. That would be so weird. But no, Larry Bird will not have be you guys? Have uh, you guys ever talked? Like you and Larry, like talked? You know what? Talked? We talked when we like when he was uh, the general manager at Indiana Pacers, and we were going there to play with the WNBA. We were going there to play the the Fever when they played. Uh, we crossed paths twice, and it's always very cordial. You know, hey Larry, how you doing? Hey Coop, how you doing? That's how's it. things going? Uh, good, Larry, how you doing? Things good? Yeah, good. And then we'll look at each other and then walk. What off. else to say? Yeah, what else is it? It's like seeing your old friend from grade school or something, but he still, still gives you props, man. And I hate me, myself I mean, today that I really enjoy talking to Cedric Cornbread Maxwell. Yeah, I, but I, I just <laughs> I hate talking to this guy, but you know what? I love him. And that's the beauty of basketball and especially in the NBA. Yeah, you you we have rivalries, you you go at each other hard, but you know what? You grow to appreciate, respect, and love that guy. And when it's all over with, in the end we're all human. And yep. we're all guys from the different neighborhoods, but our neighborhoods are alike. And, you know, I love I love Cedric. I really do. I enjoy talking to him. Um, I don't like some of the things he say. And if I could pull <laughs> his tongue out of his mouth, I, I'd pull it out of his mouth. And like he said, <laughs> if you were on fire, I'd drink my water instead of throwing it. <laughs> Funny, when you, when you told me the news, I immediately went for, to the 30 for 30 again. That's like the second time I've watched it in a month. And I hadn't watched it in five, eight years, maybe, you know. But, man... I don't have anything else to say, Coop, except I am so happy for you. 
I, I'm you, just Nick. so happy for you. You know what I have? Uh, I've had I've heard from people I haven't heard from in like eight, nine, Decades, ten years. Yeah. Some, you know, friends and just people that, that you meet over the years and stuff like that. But it is truly an honor, and it's one that uh, I'm a lavish in. It's not anything that I'm going to tout and stuff like that. But it is appreciative, and and it is an honor that uh, I'm very happy to get to go in there. And I'm not like Michael Cooper, a Hall of Famer. Uh, that's not anything that I'm going to put out there. But it is nice to know that, you know, people see you and put you on the pedestal with some of the greats that's ever played this game. Uh, with that, Nick, we're going to move on to our last but not least topic All about right. the Lakers and the Celtics right yes. now. Mm -hmm. I am uh, a little uh, jealous, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm in some admiration of that Celtic team. The fuck guys are good, man. They're good. And they win good. a championship. I'm going to say no. Because I oh. think it always implodes on them. Every year they they Not finish, always. They finish, the last couple And years. it implodes. Yeah. But for some reason, I have a feeling for some reason that it's not going to implode this year. Uh, you know, the only other team that I, I had kind of like they should fear is Milwaukee. But Milwaukee is so just nice. struggling so right nice. now. But I, I really believe Doc is going to pull that together. Because remember, he came in right in the middle of things. So it's going to take some time. But the Boston Celtics. And the reason I hate it, because we're out here in the West and we're <laughs> we're a play-in team. We're not a playoff team. We're play Again. a play-in team. <laughs> I know. So, but we don't won nine out of our last uh, 11. Yeah, we lost last yep. night to Minnesota. But they're, they're playing well. And uh, Any team with I LeBron, think... you've got to worry about. You know what I'm saying? If he's in the playoffs, he gets in the play, past the play-in game, and I'm sure he will. Everybody's got to worry a little bit. I mean, it's LeBron James, but but He's Nick, still scoring yeah, forty. Unlike the unlike the East, the West is so much tougher to yeah. get through. Oh. The East is just cream, you know Cavaliers. Yes. The East is cream puff, and that's why I say if Boston blows this, this the, will be their last legitimate chance to win a championship cool. in a if, couple of years. If the Celtics blow this, they are no longer the Celtics. Like Celtics yeah. fans can no longer call them the Boston Celtics. Like that yeah. dynasty has been <laughs> gone for 40 You're years. You're giving up on them already. <laughs> if they lose, and I've already put that disclaimer out there, like, you know, everybody's now saying, oh, and beat in the first round, right? If the Celtics lose, even in the NBA Finals, they're no longer the Celtics. They're the main oh, no, red class. No, no, no. If they get to the Finals, Nick, you still got them get to give them credit, which they should. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna agree with they you. Better. Yeah, they they should they should they should win it all. But you know where you were wrong. Look at what the, the Lake. Look what the Lakers have to go through. Denver. Oh, I know. The Clippers. Uh, Minnesota. It's uh, Phoenix. Phoenix didn't play well. Oklahoma. My fear for the Lakers is that I don't think they can beat those teams in a seven game series. Yeah, yeah. You can beat them on a given night and then you move on to the next team. But when you see a team for seven games, I, I just don't think the Lakers have it in them. And that's why I'm a little mad, uh, but I'm going to give them their gravy. The, the Celtics, I'm going to give them, put a little bit of sauce on their meat. Uh, the Celtics are pretty good. And if they win, then they break that tie where we're at seven. Yeah, that's right. And that's the thing that makes me more upset than anything. The tie made me more upset than anything. The tie <laughs> itself, because those five in Min uh, Minneapolis don't count. Even Doctor Bus didn't count them. You know what? In, in reality, no, I don't count. I mean, you know, they're still part of the Minneapolis Lakers right, right, part, right. but I, I don't count. But that <laughs> those championships bring the tie. We and I'm mad at ourselves because we had opportunities throughout the '80s to whoop their ass, y'all's ass every time, and we just folded. Should have won in '84. Yeah, '84. Uh, it was really '84. It's just I'm I'm so upset. Well, you could have had seven titles. I mean, how many do you want, Coop? You got to leave some for somebody else too. No, you know, Larry, no, you no, would have had seven. They can have them after I retire. They Coop, we were retire. we were wrong about Porzingis. I like him. I, I see, love he's a really, him. He, He's still soft, but he's soft enough. I mean, he's strong enough. He, he's strong enough to with that group that he don't have to. They don't have to rely on him a lot. But he's I've important. Not, I've not seen a guy happier to be in Boston, maybe since Bill Walton, when yeah. you guys passed up on him. Yeah, I mean, poor Zingis loves it here. I mean, he's he's hiring my photographers to take pictures of him and his car. Like he's just involved with the city. He's involved with everything, and and on the court. He's just a difference maker. Like the whole game changes. And the big thing I sense about the Celtics this year is they have 
an energy about them that I think you only get on really championship poised squads. Like yeah. 08, you felt it. 08 through 2012, you felt that the Celtics were poised to do that. Kobe teams, when they were good, you knew that they were going to be competitive and they, they had that energy about them. Yeah. The Celtics this year have that energy. So barring no no injuries, you know, knock on wood, you know, and no cl- no choking, Jalen and Jason, like, let's do it this year. <laughs> let's do it because I'm hoping, and I don't, I don't want to keep putting pressure on the Bus family because I know they listen to me all the, all the freaking time, but I'm hoping when they hoist up number 21, it's against the Celtics. Because I want your announcer to say the 2024 World Champion Boston Celtics. What's his name? We got to get him on, by the way. Garrett, what's his name? Lawrence Tanner is really good. We got to. But you know what? I'm going to veto that. He will not do if If it were to happen that way. He won't do it. He won't. And I'm not thinking about it, but it's not. But I'm going to say one last thing, Nick, because I know you're in a hurry. Uh, Porzingis. Sometimes players have to move around in this league. It's it. almost like buying suits. You you try different tailors and ah, it looks good. And then you find that one tailor that fits you like you're supposed to. And I think that's what players do in this league. Yeah, he popped around and, you know, but the suit fits. He is yep. a Boston Celtic player. Just think of had, had they had them earlier. Now oh. to compare him with someone they just played. What's the kid's name? Um, uh, Haywood. He yeah. had the bad break, broke his leg. He yeah. was Haywood. a Boston Celtic player. And yeah, he played what like happened something. when he went to these other teams, and now yep. I just saw him play the other day. Whoever he's like he a shell. With, he he he, he don't even look the same, man. No, he's a and shell. I don't of think himself. it was a break. It's just that he was a Boston Celtic player, and when things don't work out well and they move on from you, it kind of distorts your career. And I'm pretty Cedric. sure he Cedric's a great example. There. Yeah, Cedric so. Maxwell is a great example. He never recovered really from yeah. from the trade in '85. I and mean, you see it happen all the time. Coop, 2020, class of 2024, Hall of Famer, Michael Cooper, baby. That's a good way there to There you have baby. it. Another edition of Showtime with Coop in the house. I'm not going to put the HOF on it yet, but I soon <laughs> will. Watch out. <laughs> Love you, man. Have a great Love day. Love you, Coop. And to our Love listeners, you, Coop. hey, it's been real, and I'm enjoy this and soak it up. Thank you, guys. NBA History Channel is powered by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network.